We do want to get to a tap with Jeff that you love, dear to your heart. I'm your favorite. What's up? Flopping. Marcus Smart officially was warned for this flop that he took Monday night in Houston. Check it out again. That's really, I mean, that's special right there. Not everybody could do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> NBA Horford, Horford should be uh, like worn from missing a leg. Yes, and and he had one last year. It's just as bad as this Very one he had last year. He was fined five thousand dollars for this one against the Hawks. Yeah, I, I don't know what that was. I mean, it's like boom out of a cannon or something like that. I mean, has the league done enough? This has just happened again. Is the league done enough to stop players from popping? I think that it, they their, tried. Their finding uh, system, I think, did curtail it somewhat. Uh, I think, again, they have to reevaluate constantly to see, listen, are, is it starting to creep back up? Because I, I noticed uh, because of that finding system that it did go down, but if it starts to creep back in, they got to come down. And your blood pressure went down a little bit during games, too. Because uh, you, I, listen, you, I get so sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see on the screen here, we've got some nice, nice ones for you. Just injuries out of nowhere, with some special moments. Love, right? Well, the thing I would say, on, the only thing I disagree with their findings, like I think if you find, even if you're fouled, it shouldn't be called. Okay. Be, like right here, that's a foul, but if he takes a dive like that, no, <laughs> sorry, you're out of bounds. bounds. You're out of bounds. I, I think it's not like the dress code. They brought it in like seven or eight years ago. It was oppressive at the start. They let it go now, but everybody's dressed better. Right. The flopping is was oppressive at the start. They don't enforce it as much now, but overall in the league, it's a little bit better. I feel like there's some pretty egregious. We've seen some pretty egregious. There's some pretty egregious outfits too. just in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> that's true. But now those guys are paying many, many thousands that's of dollars true. for those outfits, so, and they story. are then paying many, many thousand dollars in fines for the flaps. So it all comes full circle. Jeff, thank you so much for nice spending time with us. We know you have to run over to the garden to call tonight's game. We think it's going to be a great one. We appreciate it. Got it. All right. I'm going to talk about another subject Phil hit in his interview with CBS Sports. Carmelo. Melo dropped 35 points last night and went over the heat, leading the Knicks to their fourth straight win. But Jackson would still like him to incorporate more of the triangle offense. Yeah, you knew you heard you were going to hear that triangle word. Phil said, quote, Melo can play that role that Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant played. That's a perfect spot for him. The only problem, Phil added, is that Melo is still holding on to the ball too long. Phil said that Melo still holds it four or five seconds. He would like him to hold it for two seconds. Coach, I know you've heard this all before. What are your thoughts on this? Well, they don't even run the triangle very often, so I'm not sure what the debate is. I think, listen, Phil Jackson, I don't think, needs to apologize or try to legitimize this offense. He won and won huge with it, and he's a great, great basketball coach. There are many different ways to win, and I think Jeff Hornacek has tried to find the right blend. Carmelo Anthony's a certain player. Some players uh, have to find a rhythm through holding the ball. I think in general, uh, you know, ball movement's important, but what they're trying to do with him is get him the ball in his spots so he can go to work and t take advantage of his best strengths. I, I really don't compare it to a, a Jordan or a, a Bryant. I wish those guys would have moved the ball a little bit more against our teams instead of shooting all the time <laughs> and beating us. But um, you know, I, listen, there's always going to be this pull, it seems like, that they're still fighting. Should they run the triangle? How much should they run the triangle? Is the triangle still relevant? And good offense is always relevant. You can, you can run a lot of different systems to win. Jeff Hornacek has to run what he feels is best for his team. And I give credit to Phil in that even though he wants to talk a lot about the triangle, he's not demanding that he run it. Um, and run He's awfully offense. debating in the way he talks about it. Now, let's say you were the coach of the Knicks. It shouldn't be too hard. You <laughs> and let's say you're preparing your team you know, for a game, and all of a sudden you hear your boss giving interviews, talking about your lead player. He uses coded language again. He called him a ball hog. You know, I mean, that's essentially what he called him. And by the way, I think Melo does – I'm not a coach, but I think Melo does hog the ball at times. But he's also been extremely successful. He's been playing the same way for 14 years. He's an isolation say, player. You know who he's going to be an hits, isolation right? player to his last day in the league. He's never loved the triangle. But I don't think Phil is being helpful. And I don't know how you'd feel if you were the coach about him giving these interviews. Now, look, we love, not, please keep doing it. He right. gives us fodder. We need it. He gave a show every day. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think Phil's helping by giving these interviews, talking about what his player and his coach essentially should be doing. Well, I think this, I think, listen, Jeff Hornacek's done a, a good job. Think about all the uh, potential pitfalls they've had so far. Rose's trial, missing training camp, 
Um, Joking the, Noah hasn't been Noah, what they uh, thought. You know, is Carmelo taking away from Porzingis? And I think Jeff Hornacek has put it together extremely well, and they're playing well, and they're getting better. And so, you know, to answer your point, I think as an organization, you have to know, you have to speak in one voice as much as you can. I think Miami has perfected that. San Antonio has perfected it, where they're all speaking the same language with the same goals. And in this situation, I think, again, there is this innate pressure, I think, for the talk always to be about the triangle and what they should be talking about is when they guard well, they win. When they rebound, they win. Because they're going to find enough offense with Porzingis, Anthony, and Rose when he's healthy. Well, Phil Jackson's getting paid a lot of money. So I, <laughs> so I get it. But I also wonder if he doesn't hurt the situation more than he helps it. Well, you know, his original talks. comments about LeBron were about LeBron's time with the Heat, right? And, of course, the Knicks were playing the Heat last night, so people asked Eric Spolstra, hey, do you remember this incident that Phil started this whole thing and talking about? And he basically said, I don't even remember that. He goes, you know, Phil, Phil likes to say things just to say them. And, and there's an element yeah. to that, right? Yeah, again, when he was coaching and winning, everybody who covered them loved that. Right part of his needling personality. Now when his team, you know, has been in a bit of a struggle and he's not coaching, the media covers him differently. He hasn't changed, but the, how the media cover him Should has he change? changed. Um, I think you're always looking to change for whatever is better for your team, but I just think a lot of this is about how he's being covered versus him doing something radically different. But this idea of special treatment, can we get real? Okay. I mean, LeBron, uh, Jordan got <laughs> Michael Jordan got like he wasn't always in on the pregame talks. You know, um, I'm sure he had, you know, bodyguards that traveled that you know maybe B.J. Armstrong didn't have. I mean, Patrick Ewing when I coached Some him trips here, trips to Atlantic City maybe that other players. He didn't parked have. underneath, and I was parking across the street. Right. And guess what? It should have been that way. Right. And so um, with your Honda Civic. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> that and like I would have carried him over if he needed to. But <laughs> the point is, is that. And LeBron saying he's never gotten special treatment? Come on, stop. Like, let's just, if, if we want the real truth, I just wish we could either say, I'm not going to answer that because I don't think it would reflect well on me. But the best players have always gotten, and I don't mean special treatment in a negative sense, just they get more considerations beyond getting paid more. Um, they have more pressure on them. Listen, I think... I think it's normal. That's why we use the expression, the guy you build your franchise around. That is literally the way teams work around these guys. So uh, we also want to welcome back to the jump. Brian and I both used to live in New York City. I love the subway, Brian. Just watch out for the rats. <laughs> you don't say, that's a beautiful, you don't see any rats. I was on the it's subway beautiful. this morning and in fact I saw a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. America, Sorry, America is facts. so happy to have heard that. Jeff Van Gundy, of course, has left us. It's now just you and me, Brian. So you can level with me. No, no one's listening. Okay. Have you ever had to apologize for anything you've done? Just sort of have to just cop to it? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> On this show, in fact. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. That was a setup if I ever heard one. Well, guess who else has found himself in that position? Rajon Rondo. He was suspended for Monday's game versus the Trailblazers after getting into a verbal altercation with assistant coach Jim Boylan on Saturday. Rondo would now not confirm whether he actually threw a towel in Boylan's face, as had been one report, but did say the following before last night's loss to Detroit. Quote, me as a player, as a point guard, I could have handled the situation better. But when I feel a certain way, I'm going to speak on it. My whole thing is always for the betterment of the team. So if it comes off the wrong way or things of that nature, I'm trying to work on that. But for the most part, I'm not a selfish individual. And Rondo did reportedly apologize to both Boylan and the whole team. Brian, do you buy the contrition here? For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part, Rondo's been suspended four times in five years. This is the second time in three years he's been suspended for getting into a fight with the coach. Right. He's 30 years old. I know when I was 30, I was pretty much set. And this is his 11th year in the league. I don't think he's going to be changing anytime soon. Right. He's been on four teams in three years. This is the Rondo package. The Bulls knew when they signed up for it. The Bulls knew to get him on a short deal for relatively low money. All these other point guards are signing for two times as much as he was getting. That there was going to be some baggage. And you know, this is unfortunate because the Bulls had a three-game winning streak. Or they got a big win last week over the Cavs. Now they've lost three in a row. 
Is that 4% Rondo's fault? Is it 19%? All I know is they've been thrown off by it. And so this is what you get. Now, maybe he has three, three triple doubles in the next week. Right. And it all comes back. But this is part of the Rondo deal. I mean, this is basically how he is channeling, right? He thinks the game at such a high level. We all know that. He thinks that he is right about the way that he sees the floor. And he has gotten into, as you said, many arguments with coaches over this. That's a bad time. And he has to learn how to channel that better. It seems like the Bulls are trying to be more proactive here in handling it so it doesn't blow up into something bigger the way it did in Dallas, though. Yeah, I think they want to... The most important thing for the Bulls was that it was settled. Right. And I think they, they, they didn't really care as much about the suspension as they cared about having it set up. Now, I have seen them come back now. They lost the game without Rondo close and then lost the follow-up game. So it may have, you know, making the suspension may have cost them a game. You can make the argument that it did. So hopefully that penalty comes with a payoff. Yeah, exactly, that kind of thing. I want to move on to John Wall. If your star player scores, I don't know, a career-high 52 points and then you lose, then he has the right to rip the team, right? I mean, that's what John Wall did after the Wizards lost to the Magic last night. And here is some of what he said. Take a listen. They're just playing hard. I mean, our job is to wake up and just play hard. I mean, before you uh, <clears throat> made it to the NBA or got any college uh, scholarships, you played hard every day to get to where you wanted to. And uh, to still be talking about playing hard, that's something that you should be able just to do waking up. You like that? First off, I really appreciate John always being honest. Mm-hmm. Two, I'm getting the sense that he's starting to wonder whether this Wizards organization can be the best for him. Right. His contract is coming up. He's now the third highest paid player on the team. <laughs> and it's a, it's a golf. And it, see, two years ago, they were really a, a, a wrist injury of his away from getting to the conference finals. And I believe that. I yeah. was covering that series. I think they could have been in the conference finals. They've been nothing but regressing. The, the roster moves that Ernie Grenfell has made, whether it's his fault or not, have not worked. Jan Mahimni, their big free agent addition in the offseason, has a knee injury now. So John Wall, I think, yes, he's upset about last night. But he's upset about the whole picture of what's going, what he thinks is backwards in Washington. They're not getting any buzz. He doesn't have a shoe deal. There's entire sections at the arena that are empty. He is not happy with the direction of the franchise. He's practically saying it. And the Wizards have to get things in order today because they need to play better. But they got to worry about John Wall long term. And and when you spend this much effort and you don't see the result, we saw a smaller version of that from Carl Anthony Towns last week when he had his huge game and they still couldn't win. These guys get frustrated. They're only human, so we need to let that out. We have to take a quick break, but first, here's our distant replay. It's actually not that distant. It's from last year, but it's so good, so you got to <laughs> check it out. Run it. Broken up by Rubio. And Garnett running. That's it. So he had the scoop, but Brian Windhorst and I are back with you. And Brian, Chris Bosh, look, we know he hasn't played since February due to blood clotting. Pat Riley has said he is done with the heat, but Bosh says he wants to return to the NBA. And Barry Jackson, the Miami Herald, reporting now he is likely to attempt that comeback next season. What do you think? I'm glad he wants to attempt it. I don't think there's a team doctor in the league that will clear him. Not a doctor in the world, right. a doctor in the league. I think that's the issue. The Heat believe that. If the Heat believe there was a chance to come back, they want him back, they wouldn't have said goodbye. So you think that I they wish were him the so best. final about it because they don't want him to come back with someone else, though? Possibly, but I also I mean, There's two sides to every story They want here. Chris Bosh. They realize it's probably over. They try to tell him that he doesn't want to accept it, so they said goodbye. Right. Well, I, I wish him the best, though. We will Please, ha- Chris, I hope we, we find will a way. have to see. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. We are off to the garden for Cavs Knicks. We will be back, though, in Los Angeles tomorrow with a jump. I got Chauncey Billups, Tracy McGrady, and Rip Hamilton joining me tomorrow. Happy birthday to Larry Bird. We'll see you then.